Welcome back, everybody. I have a few things to tell you about today, a few updates going on, bike-wise, clothing-wise, and camera-wise. So we better get going. Welcome aboard, everybody. Look at this gorgeous road. And when you're on a motorbike like this, it's very, very easy to get into trouble on roads like this. Anyway, that's not why we're here today. Yeah, a few things to tell you. Uh, I'm going to break this uh, video up into segments, really, because uh, I want to tell you about uh, the suspension, first of all, uh, on the motorbike. You may remember on one of my last videos, if not the last video, um, I adjusted uh, the suspension on this front and rear. Uh, and I did tighten it up a little bit within the video. Uh, well, I've left it exactly as it was. Uh, I've ridden the bike a good few times since. Um, really happy with it, delighted with the way the suspension feels. Uh, and dare I say, I've lost a bit of weight as well. I've lost eight pounds. Nobody needs indicators here, obviously. Oh, he's decided to indicate that he's coming off the roundabout. Okay, don't let that put you in a bad mood, Dave. Just watch these roads, actually. They're slipping off. I think every video I've done this year, I've come out and said, yeah, I'm taking it handy today because the roads are slippy. I also had a nice warning on the way down here. So hopefully one day soon, the sun will shine and uh, dry up the roads. I think I'm turning left here. Now, when I woke up this morning, first of all, I said to my uh, wife, I said, uh, what are you doing today, darling? She says, oh gosh, she says, I have an awful day. She said, I have to drive for an hour and a half just to pick up a check from somebody. <laughs> you know what I'm, you know I'm going to say, folks, don't you? So I said, uh, well, I've got a day off. I'll do that for you. She said, do you not mind? I was like, mind? Are you joking? I've got a beautiful bike sitting sitting there on a gorgeous day like this. I mean, are you sure I can't go a little bit further afield? <laughs> anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm picking up a check for my wife. And, uh, you know, I I was thinking on my way down here, uh, it's like a three-hour round trip, which is nothing uh, really on a bike. But when you have a bike which makes you look for excuses to get, to get out on it because you love it so much, then you know you have the right bike. Uh, and that's what this bike is doing to me. I just, I was so excited when I landed that little job for my missus. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> what's the other thing I want to tell you? I am going to talk about cameras briefly and clothes briefly. Um, uh, but before I do, uh, mo uh, well, not most of you, m uh, some of you might have spotted the number plate on the back uh, of the motorbike. So I had that changed to what you see there now. Uh, the sort of uh, rectangular, it's seven and a half centimetres tall. And, oh God, I forget the measurements, how wide it is. If you do want to know, uh, just drop me a line. Look at all of the crap on the roads here. And there's a school coming out, obviously. So, wow, these roads are bad. Uh, look at all of the crap. And uh, so that's one of the other things I had done. You might also spot, if I can look down, the tank bag. Uh, now, this is the tank bag I have on the VFR 800 normally. Uh, I hope you can see that, actually. I can't see the screen properly on my camera. Yeah, I'm sure you can. If not, I'll flash up a still image. Uh, so I bought the Pro Tank Ring in the end from Maddox down in Bray, south of Dublin. Um, very nice people in there actually and uh, what was really nice was when I walked in they recognized me from the channel <laughs> so that's starting to happen actually now and uh, I, I really don't know how to deal with that <laughs> that's really embarrassing it, it happened in a petrol station not too long ago the guy didn't know my name but he knew the channel name all right he just pointed at me and shouted really good uh, <laughs> now I know how Beyonce feels uh, <laughs> so it's great that I can hot swap the bags now because I really do I didn't want to put the hard uh, bags, the, the, the hard panniers rather. I don't like fitting them to a naked bike or a sports bike. But I think this tank bag serves a great purpose because it expands just as much as I need. Uh, this is the, let me put up the graphic and tell you because I can't remember offhand. I have the bigger one as well, obviously, which pretty much lives on the BMW, on the GS. But at least I can hot swap. Um, you know, whatever needs are in the day, so to speak, I can um, hot swap in between the the bags, and very happy just with the 
lifted two bags, the SW Motec of course, and uh, never had any problems. I've had them for a few years now, um, completely waterproof, especially with the um, fully waterproof cover which each bag comes with, which I keep inside the bags. But I mean, all I use these for uh, really are uh, camera gear. And it's not good when you have the gear sort of strewn across all of your jacket pockets and you can't remember where you put the spare batteries and whatever else, anything. you know what I'm saying. Uh, what's the other thing about the motorbike? Oh yeah, I'm dying to show you this. So many people who review this bike, um, who've had it like for an hour, uh, the, the first thing people pick up on is the screen uh, and the lack of a clear rev counter. Well, look at this, right? If you just go into the menu system, uh, and he says, I'm going the wrong way. Um, let me find it. There you go. Look at that. That's the rev counter there. So you can't really give out any more. I mean, if you can't see that, I, it, well, it is a bit small, but if you can't see that one, you shouldn't be riding bikes. <laughs> you shouldn't be allowed out if you can't see that. <laughs> and, uh, and my eyes, uh, at my age, you know, I do wear reading glasses, but that is not a problem at all. I can clearly see what revs I'm doing there now. For those of you giving out about the lack of a clear rev counter on this. Um, so, and just to prove it, I'm doing 2,500 revs. Um, so there you go. So, so fear not, just uh, have a little scroll around and find that. It's not the prettiest of uh, display settings, in all honesty. But it's there for a purpose. And uh, like I said in one of my previous videos, to be honest, I just don't need the rev counter anyway. Um, I like having much more information, like the tachometers, uh, average speed and all that sort of stuff. The other thing I've found, actually, owning this motorbike for, what, a couple of months now, is it's thirsty. I know the specs say, or Triumph say, it does 55 miles to the gallon. Uh-uh. No way. That must be on a very good day with a very light uh, rider, because I'm not getting that at all. I'm, well, I'll tell you what I'm getting. I'm sure it's in the the info there somewhere. So my average litres per 100 kilometres is 6.15. Is that good? My current is 5.7 litres per 100 kilometres. We'll go with the average, 6.15 litres per 100 kilometres. I'll try and work that out and flash up a, a graphic on the screen for uh, miles to the gallon. Um, other than that, on bike news, anyway, uh, I'm still totally in love with it. I bought a, a plastic cover from my new favourite shop, AliExpress, uh, for the TFT screen. A couple of little air bubbles in it. I've never ever fitted one where you don't have a couple of air bubbles left. But when the screen is lit up, and especially on a sunny day like this, you're never going to see the air bubbles. So hopefully that'll protect it from uh, future use what's the other thing uh, that's pretty much it for bike news okay let's move on to camera news very quickly I know some of you like the camera tech stuff and uh, some of you skip on don't worry I won't linger okay I just want to let you know what I'm doing at the minute I bought some uh, new ND filters uh, from Amazon, K and N filters, they're very good and they're very affordable and uh, I've used them in my uh, professional side of things as well for broadcast TV work, uh, never had any problems with K and N filters. Um, however, I did have a problem first of all because I ordered the polarising ND filters. Whatever you do if you're motor vlogging like me, don't buy the polarising ones because they're circular filters which you rotate basically to minimise reflections in water or to make the sky stand out. Uh, so, well, in layman's terms, half of the filter is darker than the other half. So what happens on your... Oh, gosh, that's a sharp bend, which could have easily taken me by surprise in this low-lying sun, especially on slippy roads. It's good, good job I'm going slow enough. Uh, so yeah, what happens with the polarising filters is that if the dark side of the filter is in the sky, therefore making the, the clouds stand out lovely, your um, 
action camera like my Osmo Action 4 here compensates for that exposure uh, and basically overexposes the other half of the picture which in this case would be the bike uh, and uh, that's what was happening when I bought them I thought oh, what on earth's wrong with this I hadn't realized that I'd ordered the polarizing filters because I obviously being a cameraman know all about polarizing filters and I would never have ordered them uh, I obviously just clicked the wrong button on Amazon um, so they got sent back uh, and now I just have the oh Jesus a little bit of uh, slippage there squeaky bum time I wonder if anything came up on the dashboard to tell me uh, the bike corrected itself immediately I have to say I'm in road mode so all of the um, safety functions are fully engaged um, I wonder if I was in uh, something like a track mode well I wouldn't have been in track mode so it's pointless even thinking that Dave shut up stop thinking the worst glass half empty and glass half full um, <laughs> right moving on from the ND filters what was the other thing I wanted to say yeah the other thing I'm doing is you will be aware if you're across the tech like I am about uh, DJI releasing their latest uh, wireless mic setup I did make a video talking about this uh, fairly recently if you want to go back through the video lists uh, and it's a fantastic system whatever however it's a pricey system you know and I'm and, uh, I'm fully aware that because I use all of this kit for work I can justify it and afford it because you know I then hire it out to work um, not everybody has that luxury so if you're looking for the latest kit uh, and you're a motor vlogger it does mount up so I thought I'd come out for the next few videos anyway including this one uh, going back to the old way so if you if you can't go out and justify the expense of a new DJI mic system but you still fancy the camera like the Osmo Action 4 or the three which I swear by both they're just the best cameras on board a motorbike that I've ever used um, there, there, there is a cheaper option uh, for sound now DJI have started selling the um, adapter to plug in just a lav mic so you can buy the adapter off their website for 45 pounds sterling I think it is actually Nick my friend Nick over at Moto UK check out his uh, YouTube channel um, he's using it at the moment for his videos he did a, a, a video talking all about the adapter as well so check out his channel um, so I bought an even cheaper system uh, from Amazon I shall list it below I think it cost me a tenner and it's a TRS connector to allow you to basically connect your love mic into the side of your uh, USB-C port which is on the uh, Osmo action cameras so like I say I went even cheaper still just to see how cheap I could do it for now saying that I'm using a, a lav mic which I already was in possession of uh, but you can use any lav mic in fact Nick who I've already mentioned there uses the DJI newly released uh, lav mic I think they're about 40 quid or something all very affordable stuff well certainly when you compare it to the the wireless system but I just wonder how well a job it's doing. I wonder if I hadn't mentioned it, would you have noticed any difference? Uh, it'll be interesting to hear your comments below. But uh, yeah, so if you have a lav mic, uh, the technology is there now to stick it into the side of your Osmo action cameras. And many people prefer this as it's one less thing you have to worry about charging or remember to charge. I'm just looking down at my... Um, uh, sat nav here. Actually, that's one thing I don't like about this. I've just realised got a WhatsApp message there. Yeah, one thing I don't like about this is where my phone is placed. I'm going to have to come up with a different solution because I love where the TFT is uh, uh, displayed because I don't have me to take my eyes off the road at all. I, it's just a quick glance down and I can see all of the info from the TFT. Love that position. But to follow a sat nav, I'm literally bending down, which is what I don't want to do when I'm taking my eyes off the road. Uh, so that's the update with the camera stuff. Let me know what you think of the sound. You'll also notice the uh, new camera mount. Well, it's not new. It's just a series of GoPro mounts all cobbled together to give me access to the opening of this uh, Neotech 3 helmet and also the vent on the front and also the little catch 
which undoes the front visor. So it's all done right down the centre line of the front of the helmet. So I had to devise some sort of mount because my traditional mounts covered all of that. So I wouldn't have had access to anything on the helmet. Um, so I come up with this and I'm happy to confirm that I don't feel any extra weight or it doesn't feel offset because I've brought the camera back in line to the middle of the helmet as much as I can even though the mount is offset to the side. Asymmetrical I think they call it. God these roads are slippy. I must remember these roads though because in the summertime these would be an awful lot of fun. I do love the self-cancelling indicators on this bike. So I'm on the verge of booking myself a couple of track days as well. I'm just juggling the diary round. Um, the year's uh, starting to run away with itself. I can't believe how quick the year's going actually. But uh, I, can't just, I can't wait to get this bike on the track. I feel so at ease with it um, after owning it for a relatively, uh, relatively short time. I don't know if you can hear the sound there from where I have the lav mic inside the helmet. The sound of the bike. Oh jeepers, it's just a stunning sound. I should re like record a soundtrack just to play at night. Well, some lying in bed, but then I'd never get to sleep because it just excites me so much. <laughs> the other thing about the DJI Mic 2 system is that I haven't found a way yet of disabling the auto power off. It seems to power off the transmitter after 15 minutes, which isn't good because it's an awful faff on to get back inside the... Well, you've got to stop, take your helmet off to get to the transmitter. To power it up again which sort of defeats the whole purpose of uh, having a really simplified uh, vlogging system if you have to keep stopping because your mic's turned itself off so until they release that firmware i shall be sticking well i shall be sticking with this for the for the next few videos the, the old way as i call it but i tell you what sometimes old is best uh, it'll just be interesting to see what it sounds like the other thing to add to that is that you can now, within the Osmo Action 4, I think you can take the gain down to minus 30 or something. <laughs> you can go way beyond uh, the level that it used to be anyway, uh, in terms of a negative value, which because of all the noise inside a motorcycle helmet we need. Um, sometimes when I was using the... Oh Jesus, there's so many names. They rode the LAV2, is it? When I was using that mic um, on previous systems, uh, just plugged into the side, it was a little bit hot. And what I mean by that is that it was distorting because you could only take the level traditionally down to minus 10 or minus 12. Anyway, you can go a lot lower than that. So I must experiment with that mic again. But like I say, at the moment I'm using uh, Tram TR50 mic. It's a very expensive mic. It's a broadcast mic. I use them for work, which is the only reason I have them. Um, otherwise, I would never be able to justify going out and spending 350 or 400 quid, whatever they are, just on a lav mic before you, you've bought everything else. Where am I going here? I think I'm down here. Yeah, I've got a try and find a new place for the phone to go because I'm not really getting a clear picture without taking my eyes off the road uh, which isn't good when you're going around a roundabout like that so the next thing I wanted to talk to you about is my clothing when I uh, went out on the first I think it was my first ride first review of this bike <laughs> I got a few comments and then a few private messages as well uh, talking about what I was wearing and the fact that the colours of the clothing I was wearing didn't match the bike. <laughs> so it did, because I'm so vain, uh, it did get me thinking a bit. And I'd already bought the new helmet and I loved the colour scheme of the helmet, the Neotech 3 and the red graphics on the helmet and I think it's highly visible as well. And I quite liked the contrast uh, with the colour of the helmet and the yellow bike. But I did think when I went out wearing the uh, the RST gear that I have, 
which has red flashes everywhere. There was a bit too much red going on. And uh, so I decided to tame down and buy, uh, well, some new clothing. I'm long overdue new clothing. I wear the Alpine Stars, the Andes 2 touring uh, clothing, textile clothing. And I've worn that since I got back in the bikes nearly four years now. And uh, it's incredible, incredible suit, which is why I wear it on most of my little jaunts. So I thought, well, I'd love to get something which I could sort of wear all day long. So when I'm in and out of the house and hopping on and off bikes and making bits and pieces of video within the space of a day, I'd love to not have to get fully dressed up in a suit and, you know, then get out of it just to go into the house because I'm sweating or something like that. So, uh, so I opted for this little setup. Is that another copper there? What's going on here? Are they measuring people's speed on the road? Um, or am I just being paranoid? So I went for the Oxford jeans, uh, which have protection in the hips and the knees. Um, they fit really well. Now, I know uh, it does look like you wear a motorcycle jeans. I would love to find a pair uh, which don't have the uh, the protection sort of sticking out. And m maybe there is a pair out there for me. Uh, I just need to spend a bit more time uh, choosing them, but uh, I chose these anyway. Uh, they do, they fit very comfortably, uh, and I like the styling and whatever else. Uh, and the next, the jacket I went for is uh, an Oxford jacket as well. I didn't specifically go out to buy Oxford clothes, by the way. It just happens that these clothes fitted me best, uh, and normally Alpine stars do, but I, I didn't see uh, much of a difference between what I already own in terms of Alpine Stars clothing. Uh, so when I saw this jacket, I thought that, that's really smart. And what I love, apart from all of the protection, I have the back protector in the shoulders and the elbows. And uh, I, what I do love is that it has this flip up collar. So you can, if you're going somewhere, you can quite happily wear this and it looks very smart. So the flip up collar gives you a little bit more protection, obviously, when you're on the bike. But then you can press stud it down and it just looks like quite a smart jacket, where you, which you could wear anywhere. And I like that because, as you know, a lot of the riding I do, I, uh, I ride out to somewhere. And I like to have a look around or I like to go for a bit of lunch. And this jacket will fit that purpose beautifully. Um, what's the next thing to tell you about? My boots, yeah. Um, my boots are Spada, uh, and again, I bought these with the idea in mind of being able to keep them on all day long. Uh, and uh, I don't want to wear big, clumpy motorbike boots every time I go out for a ride. Okay, if I'm going further afield on a, on, 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 on a tour or a few days away, of course, I'll wear the appropriate clothing. But if I'm just, just sort of around the doors or making videos, uh, I'd love just to keep a pair of boots on which I can wear inside the house and outside the house on a on a bike. So I opted for these and I'm delighted with them. Um, again, I'll leave all of the links to everything below uh, in the blurb. But uh, th uh, what I do love about these boots is that you don't have to lace them up every time you put them on and take them off. Um, the zip on the side of them uh, is enough to get in and out of these boots. They're fully waterproof. I think they look great and they have a load of protection with them as well. Uh, and They're actually keeping me warm. What's the temperature today? It's six degrees here today. Uh, and my feet are lovely and warm uh, and they're really easy to walk around in. I don't feel as though I'm sort of clippity cloppity and uh, does that make sense? <laughs> uh, so, uh, delighted with uh, my choice. Um, and I dare I say it, I think, uh, what is it? You know, when you ride a bike like this, or any bike, when when you ride the bike you love, you've got to you gotta feel good as well, haven't you? And uh, I certainly do feel good in this. The protection, by the way, in the jacket, in the elbows and the shoulders, is that re really sort of moldable protection. Uh, dare I say it, you wouldn't know it was there. Um, it, it, it's really, it, it, it sort of moves with your body. Uh, it doesn't sort of inhibit you in any way. And whilst the jacket, is uh, uh, fully waterproof and has a, an inner liner as well. Uh, well, I, I won't try and read you out all the specs from memory now. Uh, if you want to read up on the specs on anything I've mentioned, uh, just go and Google it. But uh, what I love about the jacket is that it, it's just a lovely lightweight jacket while still offering you a load of protection. Um, I, I would say it's a cross between a summer and a winter jacket, a sort of autumn jacket. 
but for every day riding around, I just think this looks great, feels great, and offers a huge level of protection. So that's good enough for me. The last thing uh, I'm wearing today underneath the helmet is the Oakley Polarizing Glasses. So uh, I bought these actually last year at the ABR Festival and uh, I wouldn't go out on a bike ride without them now. I love them. Uh, and the contrast that the polarization offers um, when you're riding along, like you can see things on a day like this where the sun is quite low, you can see things in hedges and dogs moving along uh, pavements, which you wouldn't always see uh, when the sun is glaring into your eyes. Uh, this really does make everything um, in, in darker places because of the polarization stand out a lot more you can spot a lot more uh, within your peripheral vision as well i've noticed yeah i love them again you know n none of this is cheap but i'm a firm believer in if you make the investment up front and pay that extra few quid uh, it, it, well it'll pay dividends literally because hopefully it'll last you a lot longer than getting cheaper uh, stuff just to try and save a few quid and of course uh, dare I say it in the event of an accident I'd like to think I was a little bit more protected uh, rather than buying cheaper clothing anyway there you have it uh, that's pretty much my video folks uh, I'm nearly at my destination to pick up my wife's uh, check um, I'm just wondering if I can find an even longer way home because I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed the spin down here on this bike um, and the last thing I have to say is that I have made the decision I'm getting cruise control fitted to this bike. Um, I really do think that this bike has gotten inside my system. It's in my blood now uh, and uh, I'm certainly planning on, well, not shifting it on soon. Uh, I'd love to become invested in this bike. I just think this bike offers everything I've ever looked for in a bike. Uh, the only thing I'm missing, like I say, is cruise control. So I shall get round to that as soon as I get a bit of time off work. Um, okay folks, I am off now. I'm going to enjoy the ride because the day is beautiful. There's not many days like this at this time of year in Ireland. But uh, nevertheless, appreciate you being here. I'll be back at 8 o'clock on YouTube next Saturday so like I say give us a an old like think about subscribing and ding that bell Dave Perry Wheelie Good TV over and out